But one of the interesting things I discovered about you um, was that the first time there was an article written about you, you were four years old, Critique. And this seemingly innocuous article about an adorable little Indian kid was actually helping to shape your political identity uh, and your label later as a neoconservative. So can you describe a little more what this article was about and, and what it did to you? Yeah, no, it, it's true. It's um, very weird and interesting. So I was four years old when Iraq invaded Kuwait in, in 1990. And um, this war kind of had this distinction. It was unusual because it was really the first time we had a televised war. Uh, this was when CNN was really coming to the fore as a cable news network. And a lot of the things we take for granted now about war coverage were really pioneered during that time with reporters being embedded with U.S. forces, and we all got to watch it on TV. Um, so my parents weren't that political, but they were watching the war on TV the way I think a lot of Americans were, and I became very interested in what was going on. Um, so a, an uncle of mine, who's now uh, also working in the foreign policy uh, world, wrote a children's book in which he basically analogized the war to kids on a playground where Iraq was the bully stealing toys from Kuwait. And then in this narrative, America was kind of a bigger person who stepped in and rectified that. Um, so the, yeah, the Providence Journal kind of wrote a, a human interest story about that. But um, I mean, I think a lot of the, the reason why I adopted early on the views that I did about uh, foreign policy and American leadership and so forth, in many ways, a lot of my trajectory on foreign policy actually tracks uh, a little bit more with a generation older than me. And I think the reason is because a lot of us who just started thinking about foreign policy in the 90s and, and so forth really saw just a decade of um, American power being applied and working out reasonably well. And I think that led a lot of us to overestimate uh, what, what the U.S. could really do in the world. Okay. I think if you were to ask our audience members, what was that first headline in the news that marked you? Like the first time you remember a global event that changed you. And for some people, it would be, you know, the falling of the Berlin Wall. For other people, it would be 9-11. Was this the one for you, the Iraq War? Yeah, absolutely. And then obviously, as I began to think about things in a more sophisticated way, I mean, I really, uh, you know, there were a couple things that, that jumped out at me. So one was I thought that the U.S. failure not to intervene at the end of the Gulf War and assist Iraqis who were trying to liberate their country struck me as a, a mistake. Um, was, that, then, was that the first mistake that you perceived on the American side? I think so. And then, I, and then that really was underscored to me. I remember, and again, I wasn't that old, but when the, uh, when the wars in the Balkans really began to uh, come to the fore, and I remember just really being struck by these, um, uh, these images. I mean, I still remember them of the Bosnian and, and uh, Kosovars, uh, these civilians just fleeing on trains and, and running away from a, a genocide. And I, I thought it was I mean, quite horrifying. These people who look like us are in the same sort of basic civilization as us are dealing with genocides and things that I thought were of a, a previous era. And again, when, when the U.S. intervened, I think these interventions broadly succeeded in, in bringing stability and human rights to these places. Um, so a lot of that really shaped my worldview and uh, uh, laid the groundwork for things that I would do later.